It's hurricane season 2022 and Acadian is on the hard in Grenada. I'm living a border in the yard and just finished the majority of demolition for the upgrades this season. This episode, we finish removing the rudder, maintenance to running gear, and install a brand new Flexifold propeller. Thanks for watching and let's get to it. In our last episode, we began working on Acadian by removing the damaged floor in our anchor locker, windlass repairs, bottom work, and opening up our rudder. This week, in order to remove the prop shaft, install the new cutlass bearing, and dripless seal, we must remove the rudder. Here's the rudder post for our Beneteau 42S7. You can see the autopilot drive unit over here. It's a hydraulic unit, and it connects to this top arm via a rod end right over here. We do not have to disconnect the rod ends. There's one here, and then there's one for the main drive off of the helm station, off of the pedestal here. So we can leave those connected. First thing we're going to do is disconnect the feedback signal arm like so put that over there the autopilot linkage arm has four bolts that you have to disconnect we've already disconnected them so we just pulled the last two out of the top of the arm set them aside and then this arm just lifts right off so no issues there next thing we have to do is pull the bolts out of the arm that connects to the helm station all right and there are four of them there are two on this side and there are two on this side. So just a tiller arm or a linkage arm. So we pull those bolts out. The back side of it comes off. And then the front side comes off as well. Now there is a pin that holds this in place. You can see the hole through this dude. It goes all the way through the, uh, the rotor post and through the other side of the tiller arm. All right, so you have to pull that pin out as well. On our boat, it came out really easily. So we get it out like so and just set it down it's going to be supported by the rod end that connects to the helm station we've got one more pin that goes through a collar once we pull this pin the rudder will drop right so it's recommended to support the rudder from below before you pull this pin that way it doesn't just fall might be somebody down there or the rudder may get damaged so just take a pair of pliers uh, i actually did use a hammer to beat this dude all the way into the collar a pair of pliers she comes right out once the pin is out the person down below can drop the rudder Just like that, we've got a rudder removed from our Beneteau first. Remove this collar so it doesn't drop down inside the uh, bottom of the lazarette so you don't have to go dig it out. Disconnect the running gear so the shaft should come off. September 1st. All of the projects that I've been doing, rudder project, the stuff at the bow, uh, removing the cutlass bearing, all that stuff has been put on hold because uh, the guys that were doing the bottom job have really been hitting it hard and uh, getting all the paint off the bottom of the boat, which has caused a massive fiberglass cloud around the boat. Today they're going to pull the tarp back, we're going to wash the boat down, get all the dust off of it, uh, clean up around the boat, and then we'll have a nice clean boat to start working on again. We'll be able to see the extent of the blistering today once they pull the tarp back. I've been walking around it when they're done in the evenings and looking at it. It really doesn't look that bad. The blisters are not deep at all. They're in the very first layer of fiberglass. So we gotta go through and take all of those spots out because there is delamination between that first layer and the second layer of glass. And if we were to just paint over it, if any of that stuff flakes off, then the paint on everything would come right off with it. You can see right there, that, that was a spot that it was delaminated. This is what it looks like before you peel it. All these little spots like this have got to get peeled back. Yeah, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another, they're just everywhere. So we've got to get all of those things out. Anyways. <laughs> put our prop shaft back together so I'm gonna try and put all the running gear back together today and even maybe even get to install the new prop permanently so that would be really cool and then after after all that's done if I have time I will start on the rudder project but it does look like it's going to rain today so yeah we'll see I'm not sure 
Earlier this morning, I took a bit of time and I cleaned up the prop shaft. So you can see she's nice and shiny and clean. Uh, got all the old paint off of it, all the old grease and all that stuff. And the shaft is in fairly good shape. It's only a few years old. We had a brand new shaft machined in 2018, I believe. I've installed the brand new cutlass bearing. So I'm gonna take the shaft and I'm gonna install it into the boat. Nice. Alright, that looks good. It's a really tight fit. This is where the prop shaft comes through the uh, stern of the boat. So this is the stern tube right here. Here's the shaft. And that's the back of the transmission. We've got a brand new Volvo Pinta shaft seal. So this guy needs to get installed. So there it is. See all the grease inside of it? I only put grease on the seal itself. Pull the shaft through. I take this dude, slide this onto the shaft. Keeps the shaft in center of the stern tube and it's also a seal to prevent water from coming out into the boat through the shaft. The seals actually bend out, right? So they bend the wrong direction. So you take this dude, which is provided with the seal and you shove it in there basically to push the, the two seals back in the proper position. All right, that's one and there we go. Probably have to do that one more time because I will have to pull the shaft forward again. Next we install the clamp that holds the seal in place before installing the flange and connecting the shaft to the transmission. It never seize on this stainless steel because stainless steel is notorious for seizing up. onto the shaft that we're going to install here in a second. The uh, silver grade NTCs is made by Loctite. Good stuff. And then some lithium grease, some marine grease. Put a healthy amount on the shaft where the flange is going to slide on. We've got the flange just barely sitting on the thing. I've got the keyway lined up properly. Uh, I have no leverage from right here, right? So I can't, I can't grab onto the shaft and push the flange down onto the shaft at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside. I've got everything lined up. Hopefully I can just push from outside and push the shaft into the flange. With the flange now properly pressed onto the shaft, I can install the bolts that secure the flange to the shaft and the transmission. There we go. The coupling is connected. Like I said, I am going to come back and check the shaft alignment. Last thing I need to do since I did slide the shaft forward is push this dude back into the seal. She is. Here are the three blades. Here's the hub. And then here's all the hardware that holds the thing together. There's the tools that we need to put it together. There's the zinc to keep it from uh, just rotting away. And there's the cap that goes on the end of the hub that zinc fits on. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the key, see the key, into the keyway of the shaft. Just knock all the little nasty stuff off of it. There we go. Nice snug fit. Perfect. Should easily come out, should easily go in. And we're gonna put some grease on this thing. You can see that the keyway is installed with grease all over the prop shaft. Next step is gonna be to slide the hub onto the shaft. Line up the keyway with the key on the shaft. And she should slide right into place. I'm using conventional prop nuts. You always put the smaller nut first. There we go. Then we add the second nut behind the first nut. This is a jam nut. This stops the first nut from backing out. There we go. So this prop shaft does have a hole for a pin at the very end of the shaft. And uh, the pin will basically in the, uh, prevent the hub from falling off in the event that this uh, jam nut fails. I don't know how the jam nut would ever fail, but if it did somehow try to back itself off, 
the pin would stop the jam nut from ever backing off. You can see the cotter pin holding the prop nuts in place, right? Pretty certain that's not gonna come off. This pin is what holds the blades of the propeller onto the hub. So you slide this in, and then if you look down this hole, the groove in the pin allows the Allen screw to hold the pin in place and not allow this pin to spin or fall out. So literally for this hub to back off, that pin would have to break, somehow work its way out. The jam nut would have to work its way off and fall off. And then the uh, original prop nut would have to work its way off and fall off for this hub to fall off. So I think it's safe to say that this is pretty securely attached to the boat. All right, the next step, we're gonna install the blades. Each blade gets pinned onto the propeller. It gets pinned on and then there's a Allen screw. Stops the pin from backing out. And this is the part of the prop that could have been designed a little better. I could imagine if you throw one of these propellers off of this thing, it's gonna, <laughs> this is gonna be a source of a big vibration on your boat. So it's important that we get this right the first time, right? We did keep our two blade fix prop just in case. The Allen keys are coated with Loctite, right? And the Loctite is supposed to prevent this screw from backing out and the pin from falling out and the prop blade flying off. To me, that's putting a whole lot of faith in some Loctite. So the blade goes in with the gears down, slide the pin in and install the set screw. And I would imagine we want a fair amount of torque on this thing. They don't give you a torque spec, they just give you an Allen key. All right, that's one blade in place. It's important you get it right the first time because you can't afford to be taking these um, screws out. You only have three of them. And actually, every time you remove this propeller, you're supposed to order these things from uh, FlexiFold with the Loctite installed. So it might be a good idea to have a spare set. All right, that's that one. That's tight. That one, I felt it bottom out. Yeah, that one too. That one's good. All right, that's looking pretty good. But we got one more to go. All right, there she is. Blades are installed. Damn. This plate follows the blades. So we'll put this guy on with the, the screws provided that also have Loctite on them. So we could have done this in St. Thomas underwater. I'm glad I waited, to be honest with you. Very expensive upgrade for the boat. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to risk losing it or not installing it properly in the water. Really excited to put this thing to use to see how she does. Yo. The final step in our propeller installation was to add a protective coating to prevent excessive marine growth. We used an Interlux product called Primacon with a final coating of Trilux. Tuesday, August 30th. It's not easy, right? Uh, I do my best every day to keep the thing organized. Right, so I've got a spot over here for my materials. <laughs> this is ridiculous. The kitchen area, we, I don't cook at all on the boat because I have no running water so I have no way to clean any dishes or anything. And then this is where I live on the Salon Settee. Alright so I've got it converted into a bed. That's where I sleep. That's where I live. It gets really hot and humid at night. I'm usually awake around 1 o'clock. I usually wake up because the wind dies down to nothing. There's no breeze in here. I'm able to go back to bed around 3 a.m. Batteries died so I have uh, have some make-do batteries for now off of another boat and they are not so great. Needless to say not ideal conditions. And then you walk out to the outside the boat, total construction.